Have you guys ever gotten so invested in a story and lore that you cannot go two seconds without trying to bring it up and just hope that the person you're talking to doesn't get bored? Because that's me right now with the Black Parade by My Chemical Romance. <laughs> there was a different YouTuber that did this video and I will link that video in the description if you wanna watch that instead, before, after, including, whatever. It's basically the same video. I agree with almost everything that guy said, but I also have like a few opinions that differentiate that's a big word, that are different <laughs> than his. So I'm going to make this video for myself. Also, it's just a good way to get it out because I I keep annoying my family with this lore and they don't care for it. <laughs> the basic blueprints of this album is that there are three characters in like 13 songs, not including blood. We're not including blood in this, by the way. Um, there are three characters. Those three characters are the patient, death which we are going to call the parader because it makes sense and i will explain why and mama um mama is more of a side character because she's only mentioned in like two songs but the parader and uh the patient constantly have a conversation throughout this entire album and in my head the conversation lasts about a week and it will make sense i will explain also my chemical romance was so fucking dedicated to the story and they wanted everybody to have a different opinion of how the story plays out, which is why a lot of people think that they purposely put the story out of order. He wanted everybody to have a different opinion, so he purposely put it out of order. So the fans could make our own opinions and put it in our order and this is my order so the original order i have notes by the way the original order of the album is the end dead this is how it disappeared the sharpest lives welcome to the black parade i don't love you house of wolves cancer mama sleep teenagers disenchanted and famous last words now the order that i think the i think the story goes in is the end dead teenagers the sharpest lives cancer house of wolves i don't love you this is how it disappeared disenchanted mama sleep famous last words and welcome to the black parade that's how i think the album goes in however some people think that it starts with welcome to the black parade and ends with dead which makes sense actually <laughs> let's get into the character lore so the so the basic concept of this is that every single song that starts acoustically is the patient song now it does not mean that every metal every song that starts with um guitars and like drums and like a rock beat does not that doesn't mean that it's immediately the parader song but but it's kind of like apples and fruits like not all fruits are apples but all apples are fruits that kind of thing so let's get into this first track the end now throughout this track you can hear the constant battle between the patient and the parader not really a battle but this is more like an introduction to the to the patient the whole spotlight is on is on the patient and then when that rock beat hits the entire orchestra all the brass all the guitars and the parader is shown and then it goes back into the acoustic and he looks around and he thought he saw someone but he doesn't i think that's cool let me have my moment all right the next track is dead which is the introduction to the parader um and a lot of people think that this is the the end of the story because he constantly says throughout the song have you heard the news that you're dead and i don't think this is the end of i think he dies at the very end of the album i think the i think the entire thing is that he dies at the end of the album and the entire album is a fight to stay alive and even towards the end the fight to die so that's my and also the reason I think that is because in the song dead he says that you have two weeks to live which is why I think that this entire album the conversation between the parader and the patient lasts about a week because he says that he has two weeks to live and also dead is also the introduction to the parader's personality which is like a ruthless person that doesn't care about your story 
because you are meant to die. He's not supposed to feel sympathy for anyone because he's death. He's the parader. <laughs> All right, the next track is Teenagers. They're gonna clean up your looks with all the lies in the books to make. Which is the first show of the patient's hatred in his heart, which is why the parader hates him so fucking much. The parader has been with him ever since the patient was diagnosed with cancer. The parader has been with him throughout the entire time because he has been slowly dying. So he has just been like, you know, over his shoulder. So he, ha so he knows everything that happened in between, which we will get to explain, but he doesn't know how the patient feels. He doesn't know the patient's emotions. He doesn't know anybody's emotions. All he knows is his opinions on what happened. Once again, let me reiterate, he was not there for the patient's entire life because you know, he was busy killing other people. He was not there for the impatient's entire, entire life. So he doesn't know his backstory. He just knows he's dying and what has happened since he knew that he was dying. So he didn't know he had all of this hatred built up inside. In my head, the patient is like in his 20s, maybe like early 20s, and he absolutely hates kids, like teenagers. He has this resentment towards them and this song, Teenagers, is extremely sarcastic. Like throughout the entire song I can see him going like, your aspirations to shred. Like it's very very sarcastic. That's why the parader hates him so much because he has so much hatred just in his heart. The next track is The Sharpest Lives. Well it rains and it pours when you're out on your own if I crash. The Sharpest Lives is the parader's way of explaining to the patient how people waste away their lives. Because the parader has been doing this for so long. <laughs> he has been killing people, sending people to their afterlife, whether that be heaven or hell, for so long that he knows how people waste away their lives. And he explains every single way that people waste away their lives. And the first way that is shown in the song is alcoholism. That is the first telltale thing about this is how people waste away their lives. And a life that you are wasting away is known, at least in this universe, as a sharp life because you can literally die at any moment by your own hands. The next track is Cancer. This track is the is the patient trying to explain to the parader what he's been dealing with. And once again, the parader has been there since he's been diagnosed with cancer. He knows what he's been dealing with, but once again, the parader can't actually feel what he's been dealing with. So he, so the patient tries, like desperately tries to tell him, this is what I've been dealing with. It's not fun. Once again, this entire thing, it's a conversation. So once the patient says something, the parader says something. And the next track is House of Wolves. and it's the parader's way of saying, cry me a river. It's also his way of, because in the song, Cancer, he says the hardest part of this is leaving you. And the parader says, you had nobody to leave because you didn't love anybody, as he said in Dead, you never fell in love. And you never cared for anybody, you hated everybody you interacted with, you had nobody to leave. And that is what he, explained in House of Wolves. There's also a lot of religious rhetoric in this as like a sarcastic tone, like S-I-N-O-S-I-N. -oh, -S like it's just, it's just a lot. <laughs> and then the next track is I Don't Love You. This track is the patient's way of trying to explain how he feels when his partner maybe the, maybe it was a girlfriend boyfriend spouse whatever may when his partner left him because he has cancer he tried to explain how angry and upset he was because his partner left him alone to die and once again the parader wasn't fucking having it he's been doing this for so long he's seen the worst of it he's not 
having any sympathy for this shit. <laughs> and he responds to I don't love you with this is how I disappear. Which, first of all, is a ballsy move. Because if you listen to the lyrics of This Is How I Disappear, the chorus is, this is how without you I disappear, or something along those lines. And I think is the parader's way of calling him pathetic and desperate and sad. Because throughout the entire I Don't Love You song, he's been saying, would you even turn to tell me that you don't love me? And the parader, with this is how I disappear is saying you are just a hopeless romantic and you put too much trust in people. And I think that's a you problem that has nothing to do with me, which is ballsy. If you listen to that song and put in mind the fact that the per that the patient just spilt his heart out about how his spouse left him to die. This is how it disappear is a very ballsy thing to say. And then the next song is disenchanted. which is the patient going throughout his entire life because this is what you do when you know you're about to die. You go through all of your memories and try to accept the fact that there's nothing you can do about this because you can't control everything in your life. Disenchanted is the patient's is the patient going through his life and deciding that he is ready to die. So by the end of the song, he decides that he's ready to die. And in my head, <laughs> This is when the parader starts to gain sympathy for him. This is where the patient starts bringing the parader into his problems in the chorus where he says, you're just a sad song with nothing to say about a lifelong wait for a hospital stay. And that hits home for the parader and he explains why it hits home in his backstory, which is explained in the song, Mama. So the next song is Mama. <laughs> and Mama is the parader's backstory. And it is shown by the bombs and the gunshot and the sirens that he was a soldier. And in my head, he was a World War I soldier. And this is where the audience starts to wonder why is the parader known as the parader if he was a World War I soldier. And I will explain that. But first, let me explain his backstory. I do think that the parader was very young and his mother sent him off to war because of something that he did. Maybe he was gay, maybe he was trans, I don't know. But he sent him off to war and throughout the entire thing, he kept saying, mom, why? Why would you do this to me? And he has like this, so like so much anger in his soul because his mother sent him to war and that's how he died. He died in war and uh, at, at the very end of the song, not the very end, but like he starts screaming for his mother. He starts screaming mama, 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 like throughout the entire song. And then it kind of fades out and then you can hear his mother singing. You can hear his mother singing and then uh, the parader starts to rise up again and says, but the shit that I've done with this fucking gun, you would cry out your eyes. And then all this, uh, all this ensemble comes in, and it sounds like a bunch of a bunch of soldiers just waiting to die because they hate this shit. <laughs> so they all say that they are ready to for their inevitable doom. That we're doomed after all through fortune and fame we fall, and that is all of it. And then at the very end of the song, that's when the parader dies. And then you can hear his mother crying at the end of the song, because mourning over his son's mourning over her son's death. That is the parader's backstory. He was he was a um, he was a World War One soldier, and then he died. And now this will raise now this will raise the question. Then how did he become death? How did the parader become the parader if like you would think that you would think that the Grim Reaper was always the Grim Reaper. The Grim Reaper didn't live a life. So how did death become death? And in my in my head, 
throughout this entire song he is he has been explaining that we all go to hell and their life is meaningless and we're all just meant to be buried in the ground for the worms to eat now in my head <laughs> i think that um god or the universe or whoever chose the parader to be the parader because he understood life so well the universe or god or whoever saw that the parader knew understood everything so well that they just made him deaf which means that he didn't go to hell but he sends people to hell next song is sleep Feels like as if somebody was gripping my which is a weird, a weird turn after mama. <laughs> Sleep is the patient telling the parader to take him and the parader doesn't. So throughout the entire song, I can kind of see, even though the song is supposed to be sad and it's supposed to be him kind of saying, mm, I've done so many bad things in my life that nobody should feel sorry for me. And nobody does. He has, he died alone, as you can see in the Black Parade video. Throughout this entire experience, he decides that to embrace the fact that he was a terrible person in his life and it would be better off if he just died. I see him throughout the entire song smiling because he's just accepted everything. He's accepted that he's a horrible person and he's accepted that it would be just better off if he died. So he tells the parader who might I remind you, has already gained sympathy for the patient. He tells the parader, please take me. I don't want to be here anymore. I won't fight you. And then the parader doesn't. And you can hear, if you hear very closely, by the end of the song, um, after like the, you know, the huge high note um, in sleep, you can hear someone screaming, wake up which is like chilling. In my head, what happened was, you know like the kiss of death where like death has to kiss people and then the people die because they kiss death, that. <laughs> I see the patient wanting to kiss uh, the parader because that's how, that's how you truly die. And then the parader closing his eyes and mouthing wake up, but then the ensemble, like the entire like orchestra part, starts harmonizing wake up and he starts looking around like what the fuck is happening and then that leads into famous last words no i know that i can't make you stay so famous last words is an argument between the parader and um and the patient which by the way the famous last words used to be my least favorite on the album but after I learned that it's an argument between the patient and death, it makes the song 10 times better. Like it's so much better. So, and if also you keep in mind that the first verse is, if you keep in mind that the verses is the, um, that the verses is the parader talking and then the chorus, except for the line, if you stay honey, I'll be forgiving is the patient talking it makes the song so much better <laughs> the patient saying i am not afraid to keep on living i am not afraid to walk this world alone and then the parader saying if you stay honey i'll be forgiving and then the and then the um and then the patient saying nothing you can say can ever stop me going home which is you know dying the hell heaven wherever he goes which is honestly opinionated and it kind of depends on the song that you listen to, the different versions of um, Famous Last Words. So at this point, no matter where he goes, heaven or hell, the patient has accepted death. So if you listen to the radio version of um, Famous Last Words, it ends with like this metal thing where it's just like one strong chord and then the song like kind of fades out. However, if you listen to the album version, it ends with like, Kind of like harmonies of like just the chorus i am not afraid to keep on living just that over and over and over depending on the version you listen to that decides the patient's fate if you listen to the if you listen to the radio version um 
that means that he goes to hell. If you listen to the album version, that means he goes to heaven. So it really depends on which one you listen to. And by the end of uh, Famous Last Words, the parader finally agrees. Because throughout this entire song, he's been saying, you have all this life to live. I don't think I should take you. And remember, this doesn't last two weeks. Because if it did last two weeks, then the, the patient would be dead. It lasts about a week which means that he died prematurely. And the parader says, you have, you're only in your mid twenties. You have so much more life to live. And then the patient says, I have a terminal cancer. I'm dying as we speak. <laughs> and then by the end of the song, the parader finally agrees. Uh, and he says the words, I see you lying next to me with the words I thought I'd never speak. Because as a World War I soldier, he never thought that he would be ready for death. He never thought anybody would be ready for death. And there's this person right here, so ready for death, just so ready to accept it. So in my head, by the end, the parader lays um, the patient down on a hospital bed and kisses him. And then that leads into Welcome to the Black Parade. When I was a young boy, my father. Which is the last song um, of this story. So the Black Parade is the parade of death. <laughs> That is why it's called the Black Parade, and this is Welcome to the Black Parade, which means that the patient dies. <laughs> I, I wrote down the patient dies and the parader throws him a parade. <laughs> it starts with, you know, the infamous G note, and then the patient tells him about his father, which we never hear about the patient's parents, but also we do know that the patient dies alone. Because if you look in the video, all he has around him is doctors and nurses, which means that he never had any parents or girlfriends or boyfriends around or friends at all around him while he died. So we never really hear about his parents, but he, the way he talks about his father, um, taking him to a parade and telling him to save everybody around him if they're struggling. And the way that he talks about his father makes me think that either he never met his father or his father was a huge inspiration to him. He talks about his father taking him to a parade. And that is why the, and that is why the, that is why he sees the Grim Reaper as a parader. And then once he finishes his song, and the guitars come in and you have all this like drum patterns uh you have like this rock anthem sound you you hear the entire ensemble including the parader sing his song like that is his song and they're singing it welcoming him to the black parade and then when the verses come in you can and this is the second time mama is mentioned the parader starts talking um about mama when he says sometimes i feel like she's watching over me and sometimes i feel like i should go that is when the parader uh mentions his mom for the second time and that's the last time that he mentions her and then the patient um sings the second verse and they sing the chorus together because now they are completely joined with nothing attached because now they're just both souls and then by the end of the and the by the end of the song with the drum pattern you, I can like, I imagine death watching the patient walk away into whichever version of famous last words you listen to. But either way, he died at the end. There was, there was no like truly happy ending for this patient. He just had a miserable life. Um, so yeah, that is the story of the Black Parade. <laughs> and, um, Man, I really thought I was going to be filming for an hour. It's only been like 30 minutes. But um, yeah, that is the story of the Black Parade. If you guys have a different opinion, then please leave them in the comments because I would love to have more versions of this to listen to because I, I listened to this version of the album legitimately three times. So if you have your own versions of the Black Parade, then please leave them in the comments. And if you guys want, I can do... Three cheers for sweet revenge. I can do three cheers for sweet revenge more as well if you guys really want me to do that. Because believe me, I fucking will. <laughs>
and I will see you guys um, whenever I want to upload. I'll probably upload a cover soon, but either way, bye.